Hey guys, first, thank you so much to everyone that encouraged me after my first video, which made me want to create this second video. That was the first Appian tutorial video on YouTube. Back then there wasn't a single YouTube video that would show what Appian looked like inside. Since publishing my first video and over the past couple of years, I've met and worked with a lot of you. A few hundred viewers connected and reached out via LinkedIn, and in things, I always accept all invites on LinkedIn. I try to endorse in Appian any connections that come from watching my videos, and I do my best to respond to all messages. So if you haven't already, please feel free to connect. Now if you're coming from watching my first video, as forecasted, time has passed and Appian now looks substantially different from what it did back then. The menus at the top right are the same. So if you're trying to get to the Appian Designer, all you have to do is click on Appian Designer in the waffle icon at the top right. Appian has changed the colors and the menu shows on the left hand side instead of at the top as we saw in my previous video. And if you're inside an application, they have the new explore view. But you can click on the left option called build to access the same view as we were using on the first video. Now to the purpose of this video. If I could spend a few minutes teaching you just one thing in Appian, it would be expression rules and local variables. When I got started with Appian, these two pieces of knowledge are what I believe changed me from a beginner Appian developer to an intermediate Appian developer. If you come from a procedural programming background, such as Java or Python, in other words, if you have a background that includes developing in programming languages where lines of code flow from top down. Learning these two things allowed me to use my skills to be able to effectively contribute at work. To get started, we're going to go to the URL bar and add forward slash rule after suite design. What this will do is create a blank expression rule. Alternatively, you could click new and expression rule and create the new expression rule that way. Now, in order to explain the problem I experienced when I got started with Appian, I'm going to add some example data here. This data is just the names of some employees and the years that those employees have been working in a company. So let's say that we wanted to award employees for being in the company a greater amount of time than a set number of years. So we want to build an expression rule that will output the names of the employees that have been in the company longer than, say, 10 years. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need to make use of some Appian functions. If you don't know already, in order to access all of the Appian functions that you can use from the expression rule, you can just Google Appian functions. And here in the first link, you can see all of the different functions that you can access from an expression rule. I recommend that you familiarize yourself with these because if you're interviewing to be a developer or taking a certification exam, there's a good chance that you'll be asked about these. Now, I want to illustrate the problem I experienced when I got started with Appian. So say we have this list of employees here. So we have the employee name at the left and on the right, we have the years in the company. This is a list of dictionary. So let's say we want to award only the people that have been in the company for more than 10 years. So what we're going to do first is we're going to write a for each function and we're going to iterate through this data. If we put fvbang item here, we can get the current iterations dictionary. Now we want to use the if statement. We want to write that if the employee has been in the company for greater than or equal to 10 years, we're going to output a text indicating that they should get an award. So here we're going to say if the current item dot years in the company is greater than or equal to 10, 
output award to and the name of the employee. Otherwise, don't output anything, which we write as output an empty list. Now, what happened here? Here, Appian is not recognizing that years in company is an integer. So what we have to do is write to integer around years in company so that it gets evaluated as an integer and it can be compared to the number 10. If we test again, we see that it outputs award to Summer and award to John. Now, what happens if all of our employees happen to have worked for less than 10 years? In that case, our expression rule will output a list of empty lists, which is strange. We may want this to instead output the text no award to any employees if there are no awards. For that, we can make use of some Appian functions. A being flatten, which removes the nesting in the list that we output, and A being is null or empty, which will tell us if the list is empty. So when I got started with Appian, my problem was, how can I build on top of the code that I just wrote to build this additional logic? As a beginner, my solution was to just wrap everything I just wrote with the new functions. So I would here wrap everything with a being flatten to get the single list. Then again, wrap everything with a being is null or empty to check if the result is that empty list. Then I would wrap that with an if statement that would give me the desired result when the result was empty. And when the result was not empty, I would need to output the list of employees that were given an award. So what I would do is to copy the top part of the code and paste it again here, which created repeating code, which is bad practice in programming because anytime you need to modify the top part, you would need to remember to modify the code you just copied, creating room for mistakes. If we test it, we can see that it works. But if we wanted to make this more complex, the code will become more and more difficult to understand for another developer. Then I learned about the function abang local variables, which address this problem. This function takes in as its parameters the definitions of some variables that you define, and as a final parameter, an expression that gives you your final result. The great thing about this function is that you can reference variables that you define as you go along, which allows you to write code that flows procedurally from the top down. I will explain this with an example by rewriting the code we just wrote. I'm going to write at the top a bang local variables, and then as the first parameter, local bang employee data, which is our first variable, and we will use it to house our list of employee data. I'll comment out the bottom code. Now we can iterate through the first variable we defined, local bang employee data using a bang for each and write a similar if statement as we did last time. If we test it, we can see that it is working and outputs award to summer. Now we want to deal with the case where the list is empty. So instead of wrapping the entire code with our a bang flatten and a bang is null or empty functions, I can simply save our award list into another local variable, which I will call local bang awards. Now, if I need to use this result, I don't need to copy the same code again. I can just use the local variable to get the result. And as our last parameter of our a bang local variables function, recall that we need an expression that will output our final result instead of another local variable. So here we will write the if statement that we wrote last time, and we can say that if flattened data is null or empty, output no award to any employees. Otherwise, we output our award list. 
which is local Bing awards. If we test it, we can see that it works. If we wanted to do something with the result, we could just save the result of the if statement we just wrote into another local variable and keep expanding the logic below and make it as complex as we want. So with this, we've shown that making use of the Appian functions documentation and the abang local variables function, we can write as complex expression rules as we want, allowing us to use Appian to tackle really tough problems that require heavy logic and algorithms. But what if we want to use this logic from outside an expression rule? For that, we can save our expression rule. We will name it TA underscore get awards. Then we can make our local bang employee data local variable be instead something that is passed into the expression rule as a rule input. So we can run this expression rule with different data. So I will remove the data from here and replace it with RIBang employee data. And when we test it with our data set, we can see that it works. Now we can use this from anywhere we want. Here I'm creating a new interface and I add a rich text display field. And I can use that expression rule from here and see it as a bulleted list. I can do the same thing from a process model and anywhere else within Appian where there is an expression editor, including web APIs, integrations, and other object types. For best practice, we would also use other expression rules to store modular parts of the logic. So with this, we've shown that we can write extremely complex logic and use it almost anywhere within the platform. When I was learning Appian, these two things combined are what made me become an effective contributor to my team. I've been developing an Appian for more than four years now. I'm a lead Appian developer. I've taken the certification exams multiple times. So if you need practical training, if you need help with certification exams, if you're stuck trying to figure out a problem at work, or if you just need a developer, basically what I made is this site. You would come here and select the number of hours you want to put into your budget. I always post my hourly rate on the site so it's upfront. You can pay via the secure payment method, which supports most credit cards. Then you can contact me anytime and we can schedule a session where we can screen share or we can chat to address any question you may have. I've pre-prepared a course to train you towards Appian Associate certification. I'll always be mindful of the privacy and sensitive nature of your work. And as I spend time helping you, I'll build to the hours in your budget. If at any time you want your hours back or you forget to use your hours, they will be refunded back to you at no fee. There's no commitment and the hours are yours to use as you wish. If you're interested, you can reach out at info at appiandev.com or you can come to appiandev.com and select hire me for more information. All right, guys, that's all I got. I'll try to leave some links in the description to guide you from here. Thank you for your attention.